What's going on everyone? My name is Aaron and I had the pleasure of spending three weeks in the beautiful country of Turkey at the end of 2021 and in this video I'm going to share with you everything I learned about the country to make your trip to Turkey even more enjoyable. In this video I'm going to be sharing all of the must-see destinations for tourists starting in Istanbul and finishing on the turquoise coast. Now whilst I started my trip in Antalya most people will start their trips in Istanbul as it is the main airport that most places fly into from around Europe and the rest of the world. So for the sake of this video's itinerary, I'm going to be starting off in Istanbul. So, Istanbul. How would I describe Istanbul? Chaotic, busy, noisy, yet very, very brilliant. I personally don't usually like busy, chaotic, noisy cities, but with Istanbul I have definitely made an exception. Despite arriving late at night, I could tell I was going to love this city during my taxi ride from the airport. The buildings, the history, the food, the people, Istanbul rarely has it all. I actually have an entire video dedicated to Istanbul, it's my Istanbul travel guide, so if you want to watch that video after this one, I'm going to leave a link to it down below in the description. Now once you have spent enough time in Istanbul, you are going to be catching a flight or a bus to one of the most popular tourist destinations in Turkey, that is Cappadocia. Now whilst the name might not be too familiar to you, I'm almost certain you would have seen some photos from this place. Located right in the heart of the country, Cappadocia is known for its hot air balloon rides over a variety of stunning valleys. The best town to stay in Cappadocia is called Garem, as it offers a central location to all the nearby valleys and hundreds of the hot air balloon tours start in this town it's perfect for booking any tour that you want to do with the hot air balloons and hiking to all the nearby valleys and when you're in garem you have to experience a once in a lifetime opportunity to stay in one of the many cave hotels or hostels that garem has to offer i stayed in one of the hostels and it was a truly unique experience also before you leave garem make sure to check out king's coffee shop for the best coffee in town Next on the list is the city of Izmir on the coast and it is the third most populous city in Turkey behind only Istanbul and Ankara. Whilst I personally didn't visit the city, you can make use of its huge bus terminal that offers overnight buses pretty much all over the country but in particularly to and from Cappadocia. And after speaking to many locals in Istanbul, I'm quite devastated I actually skipped over this city as they rave about it and say there is so much to explore within the city and the nearby areas. But if you are like me and you just want to use it as a hub to get to the coast of Turkey, as I said, very easy to do so. You can even fly from Cappadocia again to Izmir. The domestic flights within Turkey are very reasonably priced and sometimes even cheaper than the overnight buses. From Izmir, you're going to head down the coast to a small town called Selçuk. Once again, Selçuk might not be familiar to you. However, it is home to the ancient city of Ephesus and is home to the remains of the Temple of Artemis, which was originally one of the wonders of the ancient world. Selçuk is definitely a place for anyone who loves their history, as there is tons of it in this town. All of the locals in Selçuk love talking about the ancient city of Ephesus, so I recommend spending one day in Selçuk if you do love your history and that will be more than enough time to explore the city and obviously the Temple of Artemis. I will say if you are not a huge fan of your history, you can skip over this and spend a bit more time in Ishmir, but it is definitely worth a read up on, even if you don't want to go and visit it, read up on the history of the place, it is definitely very, very fascinating to say the least. Now next up is one of my favourite places in the entire country, Pamukkale. Pamukkale or Cotton Castle in Turkish is where you will find the stunning thermal springs running down the white terraces. This place is definitely a tourist hotspot in Turkey as you will see hundreds if not thousands of people traveling there every single day whether it be staying in the town overnight or getting tour buses from nearby areas. My advice is to arrive the night before you actually plan to visit the terraces as there are tons of very good budget accommodation options and it's very accessible by bus and by train. That way you will actually skip the crowds, you'll be able to get there as soon as the place opens for sunrise. The next place you are going to head to is along the coast, another city called Fethiye. Fethiye is one of the most popular cities along the turquoise coast. Whilst I did enjoy the city itself, it is mainly used as a base to travel to the nearby towns of Kayakoy and the world famous Oludenis. Kayakoy is home to the famous abandoned ghost town, 
which is definitely worth a visit, even for a couple of hours in the afternoon. I recommend maybe exploring the city of Fetier in the morning and then getting a local bus or a Dolmush to Kayakoi in the afternoon for a couple of hours. Have a little look around. It's completely abandoned. It's really worth visiting. Get some nice photos there and then head back to Fetier. Olu Dennis is one of the main reasons people visit Fetier. Whilst Olu Dennis does have a wide range of accommodation options, all of them are more expensive than staying in Fetier due to the stunning blue lagoon. One thing I will say though is do keep in mind it's around 30 minutes by car or by bus from Fetier to Olu Dennis. So if you don't want to make that trek back and forth each day, it will be better just staying in Olu Dennis. But if you are backpacking or traveling throughout the country, there's much more affordable accommodation options in Fetier. And then, as I said, you can get a local bus to and from Olu Dennis pretty much all day. Butterfly Valley is also definitely worth visiting. It's potentially even more famous than the two places I mentioned previously. However, it is only accessible by boat and the majority of campsites were closed at the time of year I visited during November and December, so I personally didn't get to experience it, but it is a place I have heard a lot of people raving about. Similarly to Butterfly Valley, the next two places I'm going to talk about offer very unique accommodation options, however they are slightly more difficult to reach. Kaz and Olympus are two stunning coastal towns that I have seen many pictures and videos of, and I wish I visited, however, the main draw to these places are that they offer tree houses as accommodation but again the time of year I visited there weren't many open and the demand for them was very high as there was still a lot of people traveling at that time so they were completely sold out before I even had the chance to try and go. The only thing as I said you do have to kind of travel through the mountains to get there whether it be by car or bus so it does take slightly longer to actually reach. So do bear that in mind if you are planning trips to either of those towns. And finally, we end our Turkey travel itinerary in Antalya. Antalya is the perfect city to settle in if you are just starting your trip in the country, as it offers a very modern and European feeling to the city, with many stunning beaches further along the coastline. And the populous city is also a great place to end your time in Turkey, or potentially further extend your trip to the eastern part of the country. The bus terminal in Antalya is one of the biggest in the countries and offers bus routes all over the country, along with a large airport in the city that operates flights to many destinations around Europe and further afield. As I said, from Antalya, you can catch a bus to potentially the capital city of Ankara, or you can head east and explore some of the off the beaten path locations in Turkey, which I would have loved to explore, but time restrictions just meant that I just couldn't get over to the eastern part. Maybe that is one for the future. And just like that, your time in Turkey is over. Using this itinerary, you can travel the country in two weeks or even potentially longer than a month. It just depends on how slow and how much time you want to spend in each place. As I said, I spent three weeks. I definitely could have spent more. And I can already feel the locals getting ready to type saying you've missed so many locations off this video. Do not worry, I know. That is the beauty of your country, that is the beauty of Turkey. There are so many stunning places that most tourists don't even know about. It's only actually when you get to speak to the locals that you hear about these places. However, what I will say is if you do have any recommendations for other places for people to visit in Turkey, you can put them down below in the comments and let other people know of some stunning places that I didn't mention in this video. And if you want to watch more Turkey travel videos like this one, you can click the link on screen right now to the rest of my Turkey travel playlist for more videos like this one.